Hello everyone, this is Mr. Ronan here again, and today I'm here for a breakdown on Inasa Yuarashi, Gale Force. Um, in this game, I would say Inasa, similar to the last game, is definitely a lot of a, a YOLO character, which I guess suits his personality of being all about passion and enthusiasm and stuff, because you really just have to you just go with his and do crazy stuff with him. He has really flashy looking stuff, as you can see. And he does crazy things, even though a lot of the things he does wouldn't be called overpowered or high damaging. They just are really awesome looking and, you know, he just has so much passion. <laughs> okay, anyways, getting into his buttons, Inasa's regular attack string is this four hitting attack string that you can dash cancel after any point to get easy combos afterwards. His air attack string, as you just saw, is a three hitting attack string that ends in a splat. You never really get anything after it, after the third hit. So if you dash cancel, you usually dash cancel after the second hit or cancel into something else. His red attack is this really interesting long ranged, or actually not that long ranged, just decently ranged uh, red attack where he leans back. So it can be good as a counter if you're opponents like pressing buttons or something here and they're in your face it's a bit of a retreat so if they press a button here like say buck go go yeah press a button i go back and I, my red attack will hit him and like all the best of red attacks you can get combos after it so that's what makes it great so yeah his yellow attack, or his tilt attack on the ground, is this <laughs> uh, two-hitting attack that, as you can see here, is almost impossible to not get a wall slap with. It sends the opponent flying so hard, no matter where you are. If I'm on this side, I hit him with it, wall splat. Even though he, he wasn't flying into the right part of the wall, he just kept flying until he was at the right part of the wall, and then he got wall splatted. <laughs> and even on this side, where I'm further away, the enemy just flies all the way into the <laughs> thing. So you're, you're not going to get combos by dash cancelling after with this move, but you, if there's a wall, you're darn going to get a wall splat, for sure. <laughs> um, and you can also combo into it, so if you are comboing and you realize you're facing a wall, go into his yellow attack, you've got an easy... <laughs> wall splat combo. <laughs> But if you fail and reset like I did, you can get another wall splat thing. Um, his air yellow attack, you've also seen me do it because it's used a lot in his combos. It's a two hitting one that instead of getting a wall splat, it just splats him to the ground, which is a bit less interesting. But it's a damaging combo ender that you usually use to end combos. And you can cancel the first hit into one of his quirk buttons for some extended combos in the air. So usually I do attack attack into tilt attack into quirk 2. Because then you can attack after that as well. So that's a really good um, way of extending combos with Inasa. Okay, now getting into his quirk buttons. His quirk 1 is this wind siphon thing that just blows the opponent away and does lots of damage. It does especially good damage if they're up against a wall and they get hit by all of the hits, like there. Well, that wasn't even a good demonstration. Say here. That's when it does a lot of damage, when you're both up against the wall, say if you've been doing combos or stuff in the air, and then you've cancelled into this to finish off, you get a lot of damage, and it's a very damaging combo ender. Uh, it acts the same in the air, and it, it can be used to get wall splats, but it's not very reliable because it's hard to tell when it's going to wall splat and when it's... Because if they get the wall splat, then you're likely to hit them again, like once they've been wall splat, like I did just then. I did get a wall splat, but kept hitting him after the wall splat, so yeah. Essentially, it's just a high damaging combo window. And that's its main function. I guess you can use it as projectile as well, because it's long ranged. It's not actually that long ranged, because he blows himself back a lot while using it. But it does cover a lot of the screen, so if your opponent's running around a lot, they might accidentally run into it or something. 
Um, his Tilt Quirk one is practically the opposite of it. It does less damage, but it sucks them in instead of pushing them away, which is good, obviously. For if your opponent's far away trying to run away or something, if you manage to catch them like this, all of a sudden they're in your face, and you can actually connect combos truly off of And like some people like um, All for One, who have an interesting thing that brings you towards them, but he can't actually combo off of it, but he Nasa can. So if he catches you with this, you're getting hit by a full, passionful Nasa combo. Which usually do about 9,000, 10,000 damage with no meter. So you gotta watch out for this, and it also uh, hits in the air. And it's something that you can use to extend combos as well. So if, and you can cancel it after his air strings or even his air tilt attack, and go into anything else. Because. So yeah, it can be a combo starter or a combo ender. It's very good in that way. And it's very long range, so if you catch your opponent trying to do something, just bring them in and suck them in for a full combo. And yeah, works his second out. His quirk 2 is this like tornado discus that he slides across the ground. He can have multiple out at one time. I believe it's only two. If I press it again, the other one will... Actually, no. He just can just keep putting them on the ground. He can put three on the ground, and he has all of these massive tornadoes appearing on the floor. Which are really good at space control, because they don't only hit when they explode, and with, with the big tornado, like it does there. So it not only does it hit when yeah, it goes big, but it hits when the opponent touches the thing. So see, even before it would have gotten like to the full range where it goes, slides along the ground, and then explodes. It'll explode if the opponent touches it on the ground. So it's really good and it does a lot of damage. And if you see that it hits, you can go into the suck and get a combo from full screen if you react to it hitting. If you see that they're gonna run into it or get hit by it, you know, you can try and get something out of it like I am here. Sometimes it can be a bit hard because they send flying really weirdly. There we go. Yeah. And it's also what you use, you can cancel into it for his bread and butter combos. And it does a lot of damage just even on its own. After that, into the regular string. And because it hits them so many times without you doing stuff, you can actually just jump into the air and then attack them up. So that's what you do for most of his bread and butter combos. Um, because then you're not using a dash cancel and you're getting three combos, which is really good. So that's this move, basically. It's a really good combo starter, and but also a really good screen control move that you, it's good to throw out and have them just all around making these large tornadoes all over the screen. And the air version of Quirk 2 is... It looks similar, except it's more of a, instead of a, like sliding along the ground, he throws it like a boomerang in the air, and it doesn't explode into a big tornado, but it, it acts like a boomerang. It'll hit them a bunch of times, and it'll even pull them in for a combo. And you can, can combo after this as well, just like his ground one. So you'd even have time to land, and then go into his combo from the ground, to just tons of stuff. There's lots of damage. Like completely free, and that's the main thing about Inasa. He has all these like crazy things, and like if you fall for like any of this gimmickness, like him throwing the stuff out, he's gonna hit you for like a decent uh, combo. It's like completely free, just using a bunch of his wind quirk attacks. See, so, yeah, this move you see a lot of people throwing out because it's really easy. Unlike um, the ground one, which can be a bit hard to get a combo off of, especially if you're quite far away over here and then you realize they're gonna get hit by it or where's it actually gonna hit him like it's hard to react to him hitting him and getting a combo with the ground one sometimes it's actually it's pretty easy but the ground one is the air one is very easy because like you see it hit them it hits them a bunch of times and then it pulls them towards you as it cut returns so you have time you can attack from the air and do something like that but obviously the best thing is to land, and you by the time you've landed, you would have reacted to it hitting. 
and then you can go into your ground combos, which do a lot more than starting in the air. And that's his quirk 2. So now his tilt quirk 2 is this move again, which I'm sure a lot of people are dreading from One's Justice 1. But don't worry, it's been nerfed in this game. So if you just tap tilt quirk 2, it releases this little tornado that travels a little distance and then blows up. Uh, you can see it more if I'm in the front. So see it travels, you know, a small different distance. It's pretty decent. It's like a bit shorter than this travels and it creates a big explosion. Uh, uh, of wind, which combos the enemy just like the other one, and you can combo into it as well, just like you could in the last game. So yeah, the small one, you know, it's kind of just a small spacing tool, you can use it to extend combos, you, can, you know, you can just use it to throw it out for your opponent to be scared of something that's on screen that'll go into a combo, but if you hold it, that's when oops, Hold it long enough. If you hold it long enough, then it turns into the tornado that grows, just like in One's Justice 1. And it travels much further, it is much larger, and it's slower, so you can like walk behind it, you can follow this thing down as it tracks down to your opponent. And then there's just yeah, it goes I think it goes the entire screen, so if your opponent dodges it, it's still just gonna be like slowly chasing them down the whole time. Yeah, which is pretty amazing, this big tornado. And it really complements his red attack. So if I do this large tornado, which tra travels very slowly, I can go in and do my red attack as it hits, before it hits, or after it hits. So when they're gonna try and block this, because they know I'll get to combo it, like if I'm here and I do a red attack, that's practically like unavoidable. So they, because they have to block this, because it'll be a combo, but they also have to not get hit by the red attack. So it's, it's a lose lose for your opponent if you manage to get the large tornado out. So something you definitely want to be throwing out, and if you have time to charge it up and get the big one. So you can run in, they, they realize <laughs> they realize that you put not that, have this massive thing out, they're going to want to block it or something, and when it gets close, you can do a red attack, and they are going to get hit by a red attack, and because your red attack goes into combos, you get a combo! If you actually hit it, unlike, unlike me, it doesn't hit anything when I'm recording, because Precious hard, okay. okay, there we go. Yeah, so they're gonna be so scared of that humongous tornado traveling at them that they're gonna wanna block it. And you can even just use it on block pressure as well, like if they're blocking and you go in for attacks. And it's just really good for advancing on the opponent, because like you can stand in it, so the opponents can't like really attack you if you're inside this massive tornado. Because like what they're gonna get hit before you get hit. And then if they don't manage to hit you, then you're gonna get a couple combo. So yeah, it's a really great, really good pressure tool for throwing it out in the neutral. Just yeah, this massive tornado that leads to combos as well if you can react to it. And it works the same in the air. It just goes to the ground and tracks your opponent down for the big tornado explosion. Okay, that's basically all of Vinas's buttons. Let's get into his combos. So as you may have seen before. What you do for his regular bread and butter combo is you do three hits into his quirk 2, which does a lot of damage, and then instead of dash cancelling after it, or actually you can't even dash cancel, but <coughs> instead of dash cancelling like most people do to extend their combos, you also can just jump and then attack afterwards. So after you do this, and then you jump into the air and do two attacks, I like going. So this is where it gets a bit complicated and almost button mashy with Inasa because he's a lot of you're pressing a lot of buttons in the air to do a crazy looking combo. So you do two hits into the armor move, and for the second hit of the armor move hit, you cancel into his quirk two, and then you do the same thing again, you go two hits into the armor move, except this time you cancel the second hit of the armor move into his sun. And it'll look something like this. Oops, not if you fail it. Nope. <laughs> and then you can do it one more time. <coughs> Sorry. Uh, you can just use this to end the combo, or you can do two hits into his blow. <coughs> Which does a lot of damage if you're facing a wall. So I'll just show you that again. This is once you've started the combo, you do um, two hits 
to armor, and you always cancel before the second hit of the armor, unless you're finishing. Oh, god. Sorry. So two hits, armor into that, two hits, armor into... That one's a bit hard. Nope, nope. I didn't get the armor there. <laughs> you can see, even that, oh my goodness, this on its own is doing a lot of damage and can lead to wall splash and it's it's just so crazy and nutty looking. <laughs> like just doing all these attacks in the air and they all link and you don't have need any dash cancels for any of them. Which is just amazing. Wait, I might just stop for a second, let the lag cancel out. Okay, we're good, we're good, I think we're good. Um, so yeah, what the combo will look like all together, I'll try and do it. I often end up missing one point of it. You still end up getting pretty good damage and it looks cool. So three hits to this, jump to the air. Oops, I went into the blow a bit early. I didn't do the suck first. Oh my god. Yes, Inase is the master of innuendos. Okay, I didn't get the armor attack before that. Oh my goodness. <laughs> oh, wait, no. The air part of the combo can go even longer. Sorry, I forgot. So you can do... To his tilt quad too, and then finish it for even more crazy damage. 8,800 just from the air, no dash cancels. So yeah, two hits, armor move, quad two, two hits, armor move, uh, suck. So tilt quad one. Two hits, tilt quad two, and two hits into either armor move or the quad one to finish it. So, all together, this is gonna look like... Oh, no, 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 no! I missed the blow, the suck. Oh my god, we're on the wall suddenly. It's okay, you can keep going, and then, oh, I dropped it, but I'm still getting tons of damage, and it's a reset, and then, oh... No one knows what's happening when Inasa's combo is. There's just too much passion. You, you can't tell what's happening. I'll try one more time. Yeah, wow, good try. Oops. I'm changing the order a bit, but it's effectively the same. Okay. <laughs> Messed it up a bit there and didn't get optimal stuff, but usually you get about 9,000 damage, which is pretty good for meterless. And it just, it just looks so ridiculous, and so... such... so Inasa, you know, so passionate and so extra. That was bad. Uh, <laughs> just take my word for it, it does about 9,000 damage. Oh! Yep, yeah, okay, that's as close as I'm gonna get. I'm gonna be doing this all day if I'm recording. I can never hit things when I'm recording. But it does about 9,000 damage, and it's meterless. It just looks so ridiculous. There's so many wind attacks, it's crazy. And the fact that you can just cancel into these, like, no matter, like, what the hit is. So if I start in the air, I can go into this, like, whole thing, basically. Just minus the ground part. So yeah, Inos is really amazing for going into combos. If anything does anything unsafe, then they have to pray for their life, because Inos is coming in and doing his ridiculously nutty free combos. If he messes them up, he'll just keep going, and then just doing it's just something ridiculous, and he's just gonna keep hitting you, and doing his crazy, all of his extra flashy, crazy wind attacks, and you don't die. 
It's just so fun to do his combos, because there's so much happening on the screen, they just, they look ridiculous and it's amazing. Okay, so for his plus ultra combos, um, you have them a lot to do since he doesn't use dash cancels that often, but like, honestly they're not that great, like I can't find any amazing way to combo into them. Like you can do this, actually no, this one doesn't work because they can recover, but I think you can do four hits. And then that one hit have this the whole plus ultra hit. Okay, there we go. And they do lead into a wall splat. Actually, I think they've <laughs> changed this from one's justice one, or maybe I'm just an idiot. Okay, I take it back. He can get pretty good damage off of his plus ultra uh, combos, and you'll be doing them a lot anyways since you're not using dash cancels. So I think that's probably the best way to go into it. You can either do that, or into his armor move, and then that's a sure way of getting off his plus ultra one. So I'm sure there's a way of... Kami wasn't a failure. Of comboing out of these, out of the plus ultra. I'll try using Seiji. Yeah, it can be hard, but if you get the the wall splat from it, it's worth it, obviously. But otherwise, you have this a lot just like to <laughs> throw out, because you're going to have a lot of meter using Inasa. Like I said, not many dash cancels. This can also be used on lock for some like interesting uh, guard pressure, so if I go... And they respect it all. It's a lot of hits. And then if you do it with the right amount of guard stuff, you'll break their guard and you're going for a full combo. Yeah, I didn't do the full combo there. I always forget to put one thing in or miss something or do something, but yeah. So yeah, this plus ultra one can be used for pretty interesting guard pressure. And if you use it as uh, support at the end of it. And it's almost a guaranteed guard break, depending on what you do into it. <laughs> and you, you can just be basically be throwing these out a lot. Actually, the main use that I find, if I get Bakugo to do it here, so I get him to like jump, dash, and air dash, and like do stuff in the air. If the opponent's ever in the air, you can practically punish anything or like counter anything that they do by doing this, because it hits in the air like very instantly. So if they do anything in the air, if they try and do like the dash towards you like this in the air, then you can punish them for it, like do, have them jump and do anything. You can like snatch them out of the air and hit them with this plus ultra one. So that's usually, I remember now, that's what I usually use this plus ultra one for. If, this, if someone's trying to do these like dashes at me in the air, like Bakugos like to do. Okay, that was bad. <laughs> But essentially, if you like time it right, you can usually snatch them like instantly out of the air. I'm probably gonna get hit again. <laughs> there we go. So yeah, it's a really good anti-air. Or like if you have trouble punishing Mirio's um his uh, uh uh his like underground teleport move thing, then this is really good for that because it's a good anti-air. So. It will hit them after they do it if you have trouble punishing it. Um, his plus ultra 2, you know, it's a plus ultra 2, does a lot of damage, looks cool, and it lasts unnecessarily long, and it's really flashy. So yeah, lots of damage, big chunk of damage, the enemy can't avoid it, does the same as all other plus ultra twos. So that's basically all I have to say for Inasa. He's a, you know, a crazy character. I think 
the main way you want to play with him. He, you don't have to be too calculative when you're using him, because uh, except for doing like attacks into his armor move for the wall splat, that's basically as calculated as you get with him. Like if you see a wall, just go into the wall splat like instantly because you'll get it no matter where you are facing. And then, as long as you know how to link um, his all these things together for his interesting air combos, like so. You can be really good with Yunasa, just so, like, no matter what's happening, like, you mess up stuff, you're just pressing buttons, things, everything's going wrong, like, you fall off the wall, you're throwing this, you throw this, and then you can just always go into, like, crazy doing his combos. You always know how to adapt and get some decent damage out of whatever the situation. So yeah, the most important, I think, thing about learning in NASA is make sure you go into training mode and practice his combos because they're just so ridiculous and nutty and they're just the main part about this character is just doing all these ridiculous air attacks and just going crazy. Uh, yeah, I think the main thing about playing playing with him is <laughs> just like having fun and enjoying his ridiculous gameplay. I wouldn't say it's overpowered, he doesn't do crazy damage. He's just really fun and has crazy combos. Make sure you're having fun and just like <laughs> whenever you get a hit, just go crazy, you know, like just <laughs> whack out his ridiculous combos and have fun and make sure you have lots and lots of passion. Anyways guys, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.